Hey boys and girls, what is happening? We're going to do a 15 plus 10 game and hoping for something a bit better than we've had recently. So, um, okay, we've got a Karo Khan on the board and I'm playing my normal setup against the Karo. Do like this opening, the Von Hennig Gambit. There we go. So we've given up a pawn on e4 in return for quick development and eyes on here. So this is what we want to see. They're defending the pawn, which is under attack. It makes perfect sense. They take, they take, and now if the bishop comes out with the pin, then we are on. Okay, the bishop does not come out with the pin. However, I mean, that's still on, but then king takes and we get a check, but that's all, right? So, playing principled. Bishop g5 is, is a, definitely a move. Cut, short castles is a move. I'd, I'd like to keep the option open maybe of long castles as well. Get my rook on d1 behind my pawn. Um, but also knight to here actually just looks very tempting. That move is still going to be there. Let's get the bishop out. Always got knight in here. So they haven't done this move. Okay. So this kind of blunts this bishop to some extent, but it also now pins the knight because now the queen is behind. So that's still a good place for the knight to be, no question about that. But I promised I would try and play more principal chess. Okay, I'm going to short castle. We're looking for rapid development. I've given up a pawn. I need to get some compensation for my investment. Trading off light square bishops is maybe not a stupid idea, but uh, I don't see a, a strong argument for it. The knight has a lovely square. It's not technically an outpost, because in theory the f-pawn at some point may move forward and dislodge it. But, okay. Huh. Now, if, so if I move forward, he's got one, two attackers. The knight cannot be the second attacker, because it would pin, right? Because it is pinned. So if pawn takes, I can simply capture with bishop or knight, I think. If pawn moves, my knight just grabs it. Opponent's rated 1548. Name is Sleeping Dragon G or Sleeping Dragong. I assume it's Sleeping Dragon G from Australia. Very special place in my heart, Australia. Being a, a didgeridoo player. I even, let me show you, while, while we're waiting for the opponent. So I'll show you my stick. So I made a stick yesterday, look at this. Well, I didn't make it, nature made it. And this is a piece of silver birch. You can see the silver birch bark on there. And it's very well seasoned. It's from a, a, a tree that had fallen over in my local woods. And I went along and thought, that's a reasonable shape. So I just go out with a folding saw, cut a length off. And basically, this is step one of my didgeridoo making process. So I've shaped it on the outside. It's just shy of two inches at, at, the, at the mouthpiece end. And then it cones out like this. And this is currently a one solid piece of wood. All right, um, so what's going to happen to that is now that I've shaped the outside of it, I'm going to bandsaw it all the way down to make two halves. And I'm going to gouge out both halves to make two shells like this, which then get glued back together. And you have yourself a working didgeridoo. Okay, now. Okay, I have a check here. And Ooh, actually he's just broken the pin on the knight. I was just thinking, check here. Knight there doesn't work. Knight here, does that work? Because then I take the pawn. If I take the pawn anyway, we could end up trading queens. In fact, if he takes my queen, I'll just take again there. There. Taking the pawn has to be good, doesn't it? You take my queen, I'll just capture here as an in-between move. Then your king's going to lose castling rights because he has to, has to take, really. And then I recapture the queen with rook a d1. Um, if I give check here, knight will block there, I believe, 
But also this this knight could also block in theory. If I take now bishop takes, that's what's going to happen, isn't it? I take bishop takes. No, then I take. I'm I'm doing it. I'm taking. And this, the, the problem is that doesn't come with check, right? So now I have an, oh, Bishop defends the pawn. He's got to move in front. Oh my Lord. This is, this is going horribly wrong. You're quite spacey today. But it did have uh, a lot of whiskey last night. I think that's probably the issue. Okay, we can recapture the queen, obviously with Rook A rather than Rook F. Rook F is already on a semi-open file. It's looking down at this Bishop, which is undefended. So I've got, oh, I can't play that, I'd like, well I can, I can actually. I'm just the pawn in front now, but I have a way better position. This, mm, this new, um, knight here, I mean if he takes, I, I can capture the bishop, but then he actually captures on here. So that is not ideal. I could just grab the knight. But I'm not that far in front materially. And I think I need to keep my bishops on the board. A board like this, it's made for bishops, isn't it? I could always drop this bishop back. What is the correct thing? Here. If knight takes the, but then boomerang, you've got to be very careful about this. Always this, this lineup, right? Bishop, knight, and then attacking bishop. Knight moves. Yeah, so for example, this knight takes, I go haha -ha, with check, but then the same piece recaptures, so he's actually won a whole piece that way. Uh. And I've got this evil pawn there. So I could try and get a knight on here with check. Does that work? I don't know. I think I like having my rook on the F file. I'm not sure about the rook on the E file. Would, would that be any better? Maybe not. But it feels like between them, these minor pieces, supported with some big guns, and this awesome advanced pawn should be able to inflict some real damage. So if I take the knight, actually, he's got to take back with his other knight. What about this? Rook, rook F you want. I take the knight. Oh, he's got bishop takes as well. Hmm. Just attack the knight. In fact, he's also looking at this pawn, isn't he? I should probably do something about that. Um, yeah, okay. Well, but dropping the bishop back, yeah, that doesn't... Okay. So I'm just defending c2. If he pushes, I just take. I'll give up this pawn. That's fine. I think it's important for my bishop to keep defending that guy. But he's severely lacking in space. Okay, what has changed with this? What are you doing? Okay, so now this knight is defended by pawn and bishop. So if I take it, it's going to be bishop takes, isn't it? Don't really see a point in that. He's got better control now over this square, but I also have three attackers on that square too. Uh, my knight can come in here for free, if he wants to, and that does attack the bishop. It's got to be an improvement, hasn't it? This bishop is now under attack from my rook, and cannot capture on c2. Can't go there, can't go there, can't go there. Can't stay where it is. Goes back there, I take it as well. Uh, can't go here, can't go here because of my knight. And if he goes there, I'll take it. If he goes there, I'll take it. So, pretty much. I'm not sure I'll trade. I don't know if I'll trade my light squared bishop for that. We shall see. But 
But it's not a pleasant position for black to be in right now. <clears throat> okay, our take takes... I also have this, though. Is the remove order thing here. Take, king takes, because he's in check. I give check. Knight takes, bishop takes knight. Or do I just take this out? And then the pawn... I can't see a problem with this move. Okay. Now I have take... Right, with check. King has to take. That's almost mate. Wow. If I give check, knight has to take. If, if it wasn't, if that knight wasn't there, it'd be checkmate. That would be checkmate with knight and, and the pawn covering, covering these squares. Wow. Okay. Can I dislodge that knight in time? No, I don't think so. Right, now here, king takes... I'm still only a pawn up, but that is a killer. That's a killer. That is actually the, the, my extra pawn. He's on the seventh rank already. He's a racing pawn. That's what he is. I don't know what to do with my bishop if I don't. Know. Okay, I'm going to put. I'm just going to trade it off. I think. The king has to take because he's in chat. There's no other legal move. I think that's actually forced. Right, now, three defenders of the pawn. The pawn is very happy where he is. Um, I could play my rook over and think about some kind of discovery idea when the bishop moves. So, once that bishop moves, there's the discovered check. I mean, you can't defend the bishop with anything. So, that obviously, knight's on the wrong colour. King can't get there. Rooks can't get there. That means I'm going to have a free play with my knight. <clears throat> so I'm already scouting for squares something like this and I get to take double his pawn slightly it's not going to be the worst pawn structure in the world also note the uh, yeah, obviously the king can't go there so if, the, if I, the king is in check from a rook he's going to have to go back behind the pawn I think very likely it's really got to capitalize on this pawn. This is a 6 10 game for me, and he's resigned. Wow. The machine says the best move here is to sack the bishop. What, really? Oh, well. Should we do another one? Okay, got a 1538 now with the white pieces. Is it going to be another Karakhan? No, it's going to be a French. Okay. Okay, are we going to get the Dima Dum? Or are you like one of these guys? We're going to get the French, proper French. Okay, the Dima Dum Gambit. One of my highest hit rate gambits at the moment. Really, really do it does well. So the idea is takes, push, if takes, takes. And you end up with this pawn on d5. And the key thing about this pawn on d5 is it's looking at c6. And that means that when you put a knight here and their bishop comes out here, you have queen a4 check with a fork. Okay. Knight out, I think it's just... Is it knight out? Then they'll take on here, though. I, th I think the theory is knight c3. But I don't know what to do in this instance. I'm, I'm just really, really tempted to push e5. I always push e5 when the knight comes out. We, w we win the tempo. We're attacking the center. The opponent's really struggled there.
Okay, so he's come in. Now there is a danger of a night trap here, isn't there? I think. So the question is, what about Queen H4 check? But then I just G3. I think this is a very, very common night trap where people get lose a knight really early on in the. Oh, in fact, no, he's got there because. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, now this is a. Oh, hang on. Hang on. G3. Knight takes G3. And I can't put my knight on F3 to hit the queen. That's annoying. Here it's got queen here check. That's forced. Then I think he's kind of out of... If I push g3, it's just knight takes, and the, this pawn here is pinned. I can't, can't capture because I, I lose the rook, so I think it's king e2. This is a really interesting line. He's got a check here, but then I, I simply move away. Or even here. Okay, that's... We talked about this. This is all right. Wow. We're into super tactics again, guys. Bishop here would be quite threatening. Pawn takes, it's going to be king takes, I think. But also, remember the knight hangs as well. Pawn takes, king takes, knight hangs. What's the plan, man? I take your knight. Queen takes here? Gotta take the knight, haven't I? Gotta take the knight. Queen here you have, I'll give you that. But then I can move there or there. Threatening to trade queens. You're now a piece down. You've got checkity doodah there, but I don't know. There's only one move actually. Okay. Uh here or here? Here, there's a knight check, so there you get a pawn. So we're okay with I'm, I'm not. I'm not unhappy. I'm a piece up. Stop it. Okay, what do we think? Bishop here? Yeah. Queen to, ooh, attacking the pin piece, jolly good. All right, so queen d3, counterattack the queen. You take my bishop, I take your queen, which you do not want. You can take there. Then I take the queen again with knight f3. Tactics, man. Look at this, right, I'm now three pawns down for my for my extra knight. But I am kind of developing my, my material. There's also three attackers on here now. Hang on. Okay, alright, so he's oh he's got the piece back. Annoying. No, I just know I'm not thinking that well right now. Um Okay, we have a situation now. I'm three pawns down, basically. No, two pawns down. Two pawns down. Okay, he's developed. He's preparing to castle. <sighs> Just defend this pawn. All right, definitely came off worse there. What should I have done if here? Yeah, 
I don't know. I don't think there's anything. Don't think there's anything I could really have done there. Okay, I feel like I need to develop this knight. I need to get my rooks in the game, but I'm going to struggle now. Definitely going to struggle. It'll be an interesting one to analyse. But two pawns. Two pawns is not the end of the world. Which two pawns are they? E and F. The other big difference, though, he's got much better king safety. So I think I need to throw the kitchen sink at the king side. I've also I also don't have the bishop pair, which is a pain. Check. Okay. He can attack the rook, but I, I get out. The knight's not got great squares to retreat to. I think I'd pref probably prefer to have... That's a free port. No, it's, well, it's not, because he pins the knight. Okay, I'll attack his knight. He can force the knight off the board right now, so maybe h3 wouldn't be a bad idea. Here I'll just probably centralise. That prevents that move. He, he really needs to get this bishop off the mark. But first, he's got to retreat his knight, and I think c6 has to be the best square because it defends this. I've put my king in the way of my bishop as well. So maybe from here, simply dropping back to d2 would have been preferable. So the bishop defends the pawn. Um, here, my, I need to move my king again. I can't come to these squares because of the dark squared bishop. <sighs> After the night moves, I might just shuffle over to this side. I've even got this move as well, though. Bishop comes there, I'll probably eliminate it. Even though I'm down in material, I think getting rid of my opponent's extra bishop would be... Uh, Desirable. He's taking his time, though, isn't he? Go through the opening again. Yeah, so this I need to look out for. I mean, this I can imagine being something that we that we see again. So maybe actually here, h4, then this would actually win the knight. h4 stops the queen coming down because rook takes. Okay, where's my opponent gone? Is that Romania flag? Yes. This is going to retreat. I'm probably going to bring my king over. I'm thinking about this though. Let's say knight here. If b4. Obviously, he can't retreat because uh, c5 would then trap the bishop. You can't go there, there, or there. Here, I, I would take it out. And then I get a nice. Yeah, uh, place for my knight. That's definitely playable. Or his bishop might retreat that way, which definitely makes it less effective and makes my king happier. An opponent is now gone for some time. If 
feel like I'm playing a little bit more kind of fluently at the moment. My blitz is definitely interesting because I've been now solidly around 1550 now for a few days. So kind of playing more more fluidly, but not really with as much calculation power somehow. It's all good fun. It is a game after all. It's nice to hear some birdsong out there. So yeah, yeah, back to this. this. This should be a really nice stick. I'm very pleased with it. It's um, it's bone hard. That's that's really what you're looking for. Because obviously um, in Australia, uh, you don't you don't have to saw down the middle of it and uh, and carve it out by hand because the the white ants, the termites, they come along and they uh, find a dead eucalypt eucalyptus tree, and they eat it. They eat the inside, so they eat like the the heartwood out, and leave this kind of black honeycomb of of crap that they leave behind, and then. Uh, your Aborigine will, will typically will, will come along, tap, tap, tap on all the trees to find a hollow one, cut it down with a saw or a hatchet or whatever, take, take the, the stick away, and then it's a case of poking out all the gunk that the termites have left inside, um, and you end up with a didgeridoo. But didgeridoo is, is, the, is a white fella term. Um, they've got different names in, obviously, well, lots of different Aboriginal languages. But the more traditional ones come from Northeast Arnhem Land. So that's right at, right at the top. Is it Northern Australia? Um, North Australia. Um, so there's, there's the Yidaki is, is, the, is one traditional pattern which, uh, style which tends to be quite, quite thin and snake-like at the top and then, and then bell out at the bottom. There's, there's another style called a mago, which is a bit kind of straighter and broader. I think my opponent's disappeared, which would be a big shame. Um, but yeah, I absolutely love it. And the big thing for me about these as well is that there's, there's not that many things now. Our, our culture seems to be quite kind of fragmented um, with the way that we work, the way that we live. And what I love about this process, the, the creative process of it, is I get to go out with just the folding saw into the woods, looking around at these raw materials, and every stick is different, every tree is different, no two trees have ever been the same. And you find something, so I'm starting to look for a didgeridoo in nature. Um, I'll carry it back, usually, usually barefoot, at least in the warm months of the year, not this time of year. And then, um, in basically in one day, I can have it shaped, cut, carved, glued, and be playing a real instrument by the end of the day. And there's there's not that many ways in which you can do that. My opponent's now down to six minutes, so that's a real shame. <coughs> Excuse me. It's also extremely healthy. It's really good for you to to uh, to play the ditch if you suffer from sleep apnea. It's a really good way of strengthening the muscles around the throat because you use uh, a lot of a lot of musculature around like, with the tongue, um, depending on like the style that you play as well. But yeah, this is going to be this is going to be a beauty. It's not it's not the biggest stick in the world. It's it's not going to be super loud because obviously the bell isn't isn't huge. But this could be a lovely beginner stick, and I really really like the 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 patterns the colors that you can get on these these silver birches sometimes so there you go but anyway opponent is now down to five minutes 40 and i've got the feeling he's gone Five thirty now come on marius the boys and girls at home are going to get very bored and there's only so much i can tell you about didgeridoos I can show you some more sticks while we're there. I mean, look at that's a monster. This bug is seven feet long. Again, silver birch. Very, very, very deep. Sounds like the end of the world. 
And then, what else have we got? I mean, something like this. This is a this is a really good stick. So, yeah, I mean, that's kind of traditional Yidaki um, style. Maybe it would be kind of a bit thinner at the top end, but uh, yeah, this is this is actually a, a real beauty. So you can see here the uh, what happened. So you can see the, the the kind of the scar, the seam down it, where I've where I've carved it. So we've got two halves, and I carve each each side out, and that's using. I've got some like power tools that I can use for to remove a lot of material, but my main main tool is a, a gouge and a mallet for that. Permanent's now down to four minutes. If you want to hear what it sounds like, the microphone will probably pick it up just fine. Uh, so this is this is nice and deep. So it's got big sound, big sound because of the the large amount of volume here. Um, I'll show you what it sounds like. Yeah, there you go. So anyway, we have action. Marius has re-emerged. Okay, now, if I hit the knight here, is he going to go there? Now, there and hit my bishop, and my bishop can't actually move. I think that's kind of his, his idea anyway. There's not a lot I can do about it. He's going to come here. I can't save the bishop. Oh, he's come there with check. Forcing a knight trade. I take, bishop takes, knight up here. It's got to be done, really. Okay, so my knight's under... I, I have to put my knight there. If he kicks me, I'll go here, but that stops his... his Rook coming to e8, which I like. Okay. So I can always hide my king in there. Kick the bishop away. Bishop has to go. Because I've as we've said, if b4, he can't play bishop b6 because c5 traps him. Unless he's moved this pawn, which is probably what he's about to do. So he does this. I go there. His bishop retreats. My knight is the one that's trapped. I do believe. So I, I, I think c6 is going to come. Okay. Right, so we have that. I'm going to stick my king here. He can't play rook there because I take. And he's got 3 minutes 30, so... Here we have a, a, a massive time imbalance. Actually, it's a big threat now for knight fork on both rooks. Okay. Well, there's only, only actually one legal move. King d1. He's no more checks with the, that bishop, no more checks with the rook, and he's still got the threat of this. And he's got 3 minutes 25. Now, he does have a 10-second increment, but he's going to have to make all his moves now in around 10 seconds. I, however, have 14 minutes at my disposal to try and come up with some way of salvaging the game. Two pawns down, and the pawns in question are him and him. So... Obviously, this is a, a serious issue. Because if I, I, if I take that pawn and then win the exchange, then material is, is uh, rebalanced. I don't know about this idea. I am keen on this, though, because then his bishop really has to go to that square. If he goes there, I take him. If he goes there, he gets trapped. So b4 is definitely an idea. And Marius is now down to two and a half minutes. So what's going on? Well, it's looking like our opponent has uh, given up on this one. With only a minute 15 left on the clock. There's a, a very clear threat here. I mean, he, he really has to play that rook over and defend, defend the c7 square. It's not even the case of pushing the pawn because the knight can come in anyway. Okay. Now I think I just have this, yeah? 
It's defended by my rook. If he goes here, I trap I trap the bishop, not not on b4 and um, not on b5. Okay. All right, this is interesting. I can win the pawn. So hang on, if I take the bishop, he takes my knight. I can take another pawn. Or I take bishop, he takes, I take. I have a very nice kind of advanced pawn. I think I, I think I might prefer that scenario. If I take the bishop there, he has to take the knight. Then he has double centralized pawns. The, the, the rook takes. Oh, duh, duh, duh. I have an advanced pawn. Which I can then try to support with that. Hmm. Or just move the knight out of the way. Something like... How can I attack this pawn? That, that. He's probably going to play his bishop to there. I can bring my knight back here and hit this pawn. He'll pr he might move it. Or I just go there and defend the knight. I don't think he's going to want to trade off his good bishop. But he's also very, very down on time. Don't know what's going on here. He has to, he has to retreat the bishop. So it has to go to that square. And I don't know why he's taking so long. I really don't. It's a no-brainer. He, he can't go here because that and he's got the same issue. He's going to have to re return. And then if he goes here, he, he's just stopping his own rook from getting to a good square. And this also comes with an attack on the knight. But he's down to 10 seconds, so... He does this. I think knight to here. But no. Shame. Weird one. Very weird one. But anyway, we've got to talk a little bit about didgeridoo, so there you go. Um, two less than thrilling games. The first one was actually quite exciting. This second one, I, I definitely think it's worth a quick look at the analysis. Did I make a mistake early on by allowing that queen in? Yeah, I mean, look at this. Black's winning all the way. Let's have a quick look at the guest at Elo. 1,600 from yours truly. That's about right. My opponent played 1,850. Okay. So knight f6 in accuracy, and the e5 is best. Knight in, and this is a blunder. Because it's not the trap that I thought it was. Very interesting. It's not the trap because... Not only of this, but because of the queen out as well. So the best move here is just to develop the knight. Okay. Well, what about h4 here? What's it think about that? Huh. It's also saying now that this is even a better move. H4, let's say play C5, which is what the machine suggests. And then this, F3. Oh, no. No. Just doesn't work. So that's one to remember. So what, what I will do now is I will bring my studies. Studies as white against the French Demodum Gambit. Okay. And then check, do we have declined with knight F6? I'm sure we will do. Okay, declined. No, we don't actually. We don't. So let's add a new chapter. Declined, knight f6. Okay, and we'll go empty as white, interactive lesson. Okay, so we, we know the moves. This is the Dima Dum. And then knight f6. Okay, so if knight f6 is plus 0.3, yeah, so this is definitely inaccurate. So I'll put dubious move for that. And it's it's saying e5 is best, yeah. And then after knight e4, computer says bishop d3 to attack the knight. 
or knight f3. Okay, well, let's check the leeches database as well. Okay, knight c3 is the most played move at the intermediate level. And does well for white. The weird a3 has been played 45 times and white wins very well. a3? Preventing this bishop from coming in. Hmm. But knight c3. c takes d5 is one of the computer's recommendations. Now it's changed its mind about that. It prefers bishop d3. Bishop d3 is not really played. Oh, it is. With 47 win rate. 47% win rate. But knight c3 is just behind. So let's go knight c3. And most commonly, knight takes c3, and then it's going to be bc3. Okay. And I'm, I'm kind of happy with this situation. We've got a nice space advantage. This looks okay. It's not too bad. So at least I'll have an idea about how to face that next time. Okay, guys. Um, two very weird ones. Um, but hope you enjoyed the video all the same. Thanks for watching. See you soon.